kids, he turned 50 yesterday. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, uh, yesterday was just, uh, I went there to just pray um, for her and the family. And, um, you know, so that's what I, we, she did yesterday with some close family. So, I went to pray for them and they pray for her and share the word. So, um, next Sunday, she's coming for Thanksgiving with the family. So, let's come and rejoice with her. Amen. You know, when she told me she was 50, I almost fell off of my seat. And I realized how old I am. I, I, I think I, I met the sister in 1997. 1997, when we were in Hebrew. Uh, so as a leader in Hebrew church, you know, so I'm still looking at that phase as that phase of the young lady I was trying to help to go to UK those days, you know. So we've come a long way. Um, yes, she was not here for some time, but uh, she is back by the grace of God. So we need to just celebrate with her and give God thanks. Amen. And um, so please, the way we are going to do uh, uh, that Sunday, you know, um, uh, I hope we are not recording yet. Um, please, what we're going to do um, in some other places when uh, people turn 50, you can leave it, when people turn 50, it's a year of jubilee. Now, the church I attend in Nigeria, which is um, a redeemed church of God, uh, King's Parish, when you turn 50, they blow the horn for you. Uh, you know, or you know, from, from on, they now blow trumpet, but we don't have trumpet. So you, you, well, what we're going to do, we shall shout hallelujah. Amen. We shall shout hallelujah. So when you turn 50, we'll do the same for you. Amen. To declare your, your, your freedom, the year of jubilee. Amen. So we shout hallelujah seven times. Praise God. So, so just remind me, or you have it in your, you have in your, in your keyboard. I know who shout. We, 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 with what you have, we, we, we say hallelujah together. Let's celebrate. Amen. Praise God. So that is it for next Sunday. God bless you. Amen. Let's give Jesus a clap of fin as we set for the word of today. Praise the name of the Lord. Our Father, we want to thank you this morning. We glorify your name. We thank you for all that we have received from you. We thank you for the month of February, a wonderful month, month of favor, month of protection. Even though it was a short month, but your hand was not shut towards us. Your grace, your mercy was not shut towards us. Your protection was not cut short in the name of Jesus. And so we bless the offering of this money. Father, sanctify every offering and bless the hand that has given. Let them open new doors. I say, let them open new doors. Amen. As they step into the month of March, they will open the doors of promotion, doors of marriage, doors of fruit of the womb, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a clap of you once more. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like to welcome those who are joining us on stream. And I pray that the Lord will use the word of today to accelerate you to greater heights. For this is the year of greater heights for us. And we continue to hear the word of the Lord. And so today, I'm going to be uh, ministering on the series on the tenacity by the spirit of faith. Tenacity by the spirit of faith. Amen. Now, we all know what faith is, but let us look at it the definition of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 Hebrews 11 verse 1 just to remind you about what faith is. Then now faith is the substance the assurance of things hoped for The conviction of things not seen. That's what faith is. It's the assurance of things hoped for. 
the conviction of things not seen. So that's why faith is a substance, a spiritual substance that is in you through the word of God. Faith is a spiritual seed that is sown into your life, sown into your circumstances that you may obtain that which the Lord has spoken about which may yet to be realized or come to manifestation. But faith enables you to have the spiritual sense of faith. Faith enables you to keep up the hope, to keep up the hope of what the will of God is, to keep up the hope of where God is taking you to the destination or to the destiny he has prepared for you. That's what faith is. And I'm talking about the spirit of faith, the, the, the higher level of faith, the faith that is received by the encounter with the word of God. Faith that is received by the dreams and vision that God gives you, that God shows you. You alone. Praise God. Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says, I'm reading from Amplified. It says, for by grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than he ought to think. But to think as to have sound judgment. To think as to have sound judgment. As God has apportioned to each a degree of faith. A degree of faith. And a purpose designed for service. So this, the faith we're talking about, it encompasses everything. Both for the calling both for the service of the Lord, both for your destiny, and for what you believe God for, which the word of God has given you an answer for you to receive a confirmation of what you desire for the Lord to do in your life. And so his faith is that. And so when we talk about the spirit of faith, it's an imputed faith by the spirit of God. Imputed faith. You know, let, let, let me... Let me Acknowledge the man of God who have spoken about this spirit of faith extensively, and that is Bishop Oyedepo. He has spoken about the spirit of faith extensively. I have read the book about spirit life, and God gave him so much of revelation concerning the spirit of faith. So I've learned from that, and I've used it over the years. And it's real that there is a spirit of faith. Hallelujah. And so we need to understand this in the time that we are. So that we can have a focus. Those are the things I want to share today. We can have focus. We can endure the time. And that's why it's a spirit of faith. Because it's what God has given to you. It's what God has spoken to you. You know, in Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That means you need to keep on hearing, keep on hearing, so that your faith is steadfast. But there is a certain faith that comes to you by the inspiration of the Lord, by the vision that God shows you, by the word through the Holy Spirit that comes to you, it imputed faith in you. It imputed faith in you. That spirit of faith. That's why it becomes the spirit of faith. Or you can say the gift of faith. By the Holy Spirit. And so we need to, to, to recognize this in our Christian life. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the spirit of faith gives you the tenacity. And that's why I said tenacity by the spirit of faith. In other words, this spirit of faith gives you the determination. That's what tenacity is. Determination. 
It gives you the energy. It gives you the confidence. It gives you the boldness. It gives you that endurance. That's why it's the spirit of faith. You hear it once, you respond. Because something has encompassed you. Revelation. The rima of the word of God. When God revealed himself through his word to you, it becomes the spirit of faith. When God reveals himself through the scriptures to you, and you receive it, it becomes the spirit of faith because you receive it into your spirit. The Bible says, with the heart a man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses unto salvation. And so it is that what we're talking about. And this year for you to get to the greater heights that the Lord has given us prophetically as a church, to get to the greater heights, you need to understand what the spirit of faith is. Because along the journey to greater heights, there can be destruction. There can be affliction. But when you keep up in this spirit of faith, you begin to go, you, you, you develop the tenacity to cope with every affliction. I hope I'm clear. So, the spirit of faith gives you this tenacity to walk in faith and not in fear. To believe the Lord and not to backslide. Not to backslide from faith. You know, when they say people backslide, they always talk about when they fall into sin or something like that. But don't you understand that those who do not keep the word of God in their heart, they can backslide in their faith. They start to live in the flesh. So that's what I'm saying. You need the tenacity which you can draw from the spirit of faith and you will not backslide from your faith. I said you will not backslide from your faith. Listen people, the Lord called Abraham out of his comfort zone. He made a journey to the land that he will be shown. And getting into the land after some time, there was famine. There was famine. He did not relent. He still continued. He didn't say, I'm going back to where I've known. He continued and God showed him the land of Egypt, which was then popular. He went to the land of Egypt. He came back to be a rich person. So, you need tenacity. You need to draw it from the spirit of faith that you have received. If you have a dream which is yet to be a reality, you don't have to give up. Amen. If you have an idea which is yet to be birth, you don't need to give up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is showing you as part of his plans. Amen. Every dream. God is showing you as part of his plan. The dream that has to do with your life and destiny. Especially God can give you a dream just to show you an idea of what you are praying for. And just give you a snapshot by dreams and by vision. So he's showing us. So you need to draw tenacity from that spirit of faith to get there. To see that dream becoming a reality. You need the tenacity to be established in your business. The business which you started from the boot of your car or from the garage of your house because God has spoken to you about that business and you, take, you, 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 you receive tenacity from that faith in that word, the conviction that God has given you. That's where you draw tenacity from. You don't need to read positive books. There are some books they said positive thinking. You don't need to read that. You've received the word of God. It's a source of faith. Hallelujah. So you need that. Look at the life of Joseph. Joseph had a dream. They called him a dreamer. But he never lost hope even when he was thrown into the pit. That pit was a moment or momentarily hindrance to the dream that the Lord has given him. He never lost hope. He stood the test of faith. He stood the test of faith. 
He didn't even make an attempt to say, I want to come out of this pit. He stood the test of faith. He served in the house of Potiphar. He didn't try to escape back to his comfort zone. They sold him as a slave. And then he got to imagine the son of Jacob being sold as a slave. To go and serve in another person's house. A son of Jacob. Jacob, the son of Isaac. Isaac, the, the son of Abraham. Those who, who had the inheritance of the Lord. Yet, a circumstances says he has to be a servant in the house of the Lord. Not in the house of the Lord, sorry, in the house of Potiphar. That was a momentary affliction. But he kept the dream alive in himself. So will have said, no, I'm going back to my father's house. But because of the dream that God has shown him, I believe he kept the faith going. He applied tenacity. I remember many, many years ago, my first six months, I want to go back to my father's house. I want to go back to where I came from. But by tenacity, from the spirit of faith, I withstood the time of affliction. I was sleeping in one room by myself. I came to join us, but we are six guys sharing a room. It's an affliction. It's an affliction. But with the tenacity of faith that you have in you, makes you to start to pursue your destiny. I was in town yesterday. I drove past the two buildings I live. I live in Ponte City. I live in um, Coniston Court on the corner of Sopa and Eber Road. Then I, I last lived in uh, a building called um, ah, Park Mansion on the corner of of Edith Cavell and Klein next to the Ipo police station. I drove past all those places. I was just thinking, what of if I have given up? What of if God did not take me from this place? It's not by my power, nor by my, my might. It's by the Spirit of God. And the tenacity that you draw from the Word of God, from the faith, because there is a place that is taking you. The Spirit of faith it's just different from any kinds of faith. The spirit of faith is what has been imputed in you. And then you draw your strength from it. Hallelujah. So we saw in the life of, of Joseph that, you know, th this dream continued to take him forward. It continued to take him forward. They took him into prison. He did not argue his accusation. He did not argue his accusation. Yet, the dream is yet to be realized. There was something that is drawing that guy. He did not die in prison. That was tenacity. That was determination. Determination. And then, when I look at that account, and I saw that despite that Joseph was, was young, I believe that dream gave him so much hope, so much of the spirit of faith that he had tenacity to go through all the affliction. Sometimes we say, yes, he had the grace of God that even the coat was taken from him. The grace still is, is upon him. But there is something from the inside that kept him going. And then I saw that in Genesis chapter 40, verse 14 to 15. And that showed me and when he interpreted the dream of the cup bearer, and he said to the cup bearer, he said, remember me when it goes well with you and mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. He said, and get me out of this house. So he knew he does not belong to where they put him. He knew that he does not belong to where life is putting him in stagnation. And he said, he said, in fact, I was kidnapped from the land of Hebrew. Here, I have done nothing that they should put me into Dongion. So he, he, he knew. He knew exactly what was happening. But something, was, something kept him going. He was drawing his strength from the dream that God showed him. He was drawing his strength from the love 
that he knows. Inside of him was tenacity of the spirit working inside of him. He knew he does not belong to where the enemy put him. Some of you, you may be operating at a level of stagnation. Doesn't mean you don't make money. But when, if God has shown you a vision, a dream of where it's taking you, don't let that vision, don't let that dream die. Or perhaps you are suffering, you are having affliction. You, 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 you have gone to varsity for seven years and still what you are doing seems as if it's an affliction to you. But you had a dream in the beginning. You have to keep that dream going. You have to develop that tenacity of the faith of the picture that God has showed you. I believe Joseph kept the picture alive. He kept the picture alive. So you don't have to accept the things you know it's not the will of God for you. Just continue believing God. Continue that journey of faith. And you shall surely see your dream come through and your vision being enlarged in the name of Jesus. As I have always said, that faith is a catalyst. That's my own description. Faith is a catalyst. It's a catalyst for your dream and vision. For this new year that we've just started, the year is still young. And that's why the tenacity from the spirit of faith is so important for you to grasp it. So faith is a catalyst for your dream and vision. For those who are science, who are into science or scientists, they know that in chemistry, when you talk about catalyst, it's a catalyst that accelerates other things while it remains alone. So faith is a catalyst that propels you, that accelerates your expectation. It gives you tenacity in the midst of affliction. That's what faith is. Therefore, True dreams and vision, the Spirit of God unveils His plan for your life that you must follow without becoming weak, without becoming detracted. And so you need it. And this is what I'm talking about. The Spirit of faith is by encountering those silent words. You get it from hearing the voice of God as you mature in Christ. That quiet voice in your heart the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart about an assignment, about a career direction. Don't take it to be ordinary. God is speaking to you and from there you draw the spirit of faith to pursue your destiny. You draw the spirit of faith to pursue your destiny. Don't take certain level of words, the silent word of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, even it used to happen to me, I would say, my mind is telling me this. Oh, I did something and I said, oh, it was my mind that told me. It's not your mind, it's the Spirit of God. That's why it comes to be positive. It's the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. So, you, you, you need to receive it. And once you receive it, you receive, you receive that Spirit. It's imputed in you. That's why Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2 he says, he says, as he spoke, as he spoke, that is God, as God spoke, the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. He said, as he spoke, the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of God, the voice of God is irresistible. It's irresistible. When your heart is open, when your spirit is open to receive, it's irresistible when the voice of God comes. It might wake you up to pray. It might give you a picture. It might give you... I, I, I told you guys, when the Lord showed me that I'm going to have a child, it showed me when I was going to have a child. It showed me everybody in that, in that naming ceremony. He showed me everybody. And I told my wife, you get ready now. 
One month after, she was fruitful. Eight months or nine months after, the sun came. Everybody in that dream was in that, in that uh, 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 naming ceremony, including the, the late ambassador for Nigeria, Nigeria ambassador in South Africa, who was a brother of mine. He, he, everybody was there. I kept the dream. I received the spirit of faith from that. So what I'm telling you, the spirit of faith is not what you run around and go to any mountain to go and receive. God will come to your mountain in your house. God will come to your altar in your house and he will speak to you. He will show to you if your heart is open. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God is irresistible. The vision. And you must immediately respond and take action and you will succeed. You will succeed. You will get to your destiny unless you are distracted. Unless you are distracted. In Matthew chapter 14, Matthew chapter 14, for about 28, Jesus told the disciples after he has ministered to a, a large crowd, Matthew chapter 14, he ministered to a large crowd and he told the disciples to go on a boat and go to the other side. And the Bible said at night he appeared to them and he was walking on the, on the water. While he walks on the water, the, the Bible says the disciples were terrified. They were afraid. They were afraid. They thought it was a ghost. So when they thought it was a ghost, and you know who is going to speak next, was Peter. He was he's the leader of the apostle. He said, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come. And the Lord said, come. And the Bible said they stepped into the water. The water became a solid ground. The word came to him. That's the word of Jesus. Jesus said, the word that I have spoken to you said, they are spirit and they are life. So the word came into Peter as spirit of faith. And he took the step onto the water. The Bible said he walked on the water. That is an amazing miracle. That's an amazing. So you can do the work of Christ when you walk in the spirit of faith. Because he says in John chapter 14, he said, the works that I do, you, can, you will do much more than that if you believe. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. So he, he, he walked on water. Now, the voice came into him as a spirit. He walked on the water, but he had no tenacity to finish the walking. Why? There was distraction. There was distraction. He saw the waves. He saw the waves. Then fear gripped him. Some of you, you can, if you don't have the spirit of faith, you can close the business because you now saw that, no, there's nothing happening in this. There's nothing happening. I'm not, I don't have, there's no, more, no money coming in. But God has said, this is what you should do. But you want to leave it because there is nothing coming out of it. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. I started real estate for the first three years. I cannot boast of $1,000. I can't. It was a commission. I was an assistant. But for the next 20 years, God has been wonderful. So you don't need to withdraw from where God has called you into. It became a solid ground. Peter walked on the water. Every account of the synoptics, maybe one or two of them carried it. They carried it. It's, it's an amazing thing. And this is relevant to our lives that we receive. We have been praying. We have been praying. And God is suddenly speaking to us what we should do. And then we begin what we should do. We get into the marriage, we get into this relationship, and then we start to lose hope because of distractions. So I want to tell you this morning, you need tenacity. You need to draw tenacity from the faith, from the voice that has spoken to you. Because the voice which spoke to you in the time of affliction 
will not leave you behind. We speak you into direction. The voice will speak you into solution. The voice will speak you to where you will obtain help. That's how it is. But God needs you to be focused. God needs you to be focused. The voice of God is spirit, which comes with the spirit of faith, a force that is within you, which propels you to fly and gets you to believe and not to doubt. But distractions can get you to start doubting. That was what happened to Peter. And when he was sinking, he cried out unto the Lord and he saved him. I want you to cry back unto God where you think you are sinking. And he will surely save you. If he's the one who put you there by the will of God, he will surely save you. If he's the one who put you in that marriage by the will of God, he will surely save you. If he's the one who put you in that organization, he will surely, he will surely answer you for your promotions. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to move fast. Tenacity by the spirit of faith gives you endurance. Gives you endurance. Endurance with, with grace. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the, the word endurance, sometimes, uh, some have used it to be as if when you endure certain things, God is not in it. Some have seen it that way. But endurance is part of it. Endurance is part of it. And I want to use the word of Apostle James, who wrote here, in, in, in the time of testing of our faith. It says here, James chapter 1, it says in verse 2, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. There are trials along the way to your destiny. So was Joseph had a trial on his way to destiny. The same thing with David on the way to his destiny. He encountered trial. But they never lost the tenacity. They never lost it. They endured the moment. And he says, knowing, verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. The testing of your faith producing, produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Lacking in nothing. So that you may be complete, lacking in nothing. If God showed you that you are an attorney, that you are going to be an attorney and it's going to take you four years to study that course, you need an endurance. You need the endurance of four years. I've just endured a four, five years what should take me two years? Yes, because of my work. I did it for four years. I was, I was awarded Master of Leadership and Theology. It, could, it can only be by endurance. With the, with the work of ministry, with the work of my personal business, it can only be endurance. Because it was what God led me to go and do. He says, study to be approved. So when you receive direction from the Lord, Unto yourself, it's a spirit of faith. And there you draw tenacity. You draw endurance. And that endurance comes with grace. Praise the name of the Lord. And then you may be perfect and complete. Lacking in nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. So endurance is part of it. Endurance is part of it. Hallelujah. Again, in Romans Romans chapter 5 says to us, He says, Through whom also Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into His grace. Our introduction by faith into His grace, in which we stand and we exult in hope of the glory of God, and not only this, but we also exult. In our tribulation. Knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. And persevering, perseverance proving character. And proving character hope. And hope does not disappoint. And I'm saying to you. When you walk by the spirit of faith. Your hope shall not be disappointed. 
Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. So, the spirit of faith, when you draw this tenacity, it gives you endurance. It gives you endurance. To withstand, to withstand the pressure, to withstand all that God will want you to, to believe, and you will know that this is God speaking to you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Sorry. And so we are saying today that endurance is part of the journey. You cannot be too shy. You cannot be too frustrated when you are walking in the will of God. You cannot be frustrated. Praise the name of the Lord. You cannot be frustrated. The journey may be long, but you will get there. I said the journey may be long, but you will get there. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, let's look at Joshua chapter 6. It, it's also, you know, it teaches us something. Joshua chapter 6. The wall of Jericho was tightly shut. Why? Because of the sons of Israel. No one went out. No one came in. It was shut down. It was shut down. And as a child of God or servant of God, an embargo may be placed. An embargo may be placed on your ambition. An embargo may be placed on your calling, even on your vision. These embargoes may be like the wall of Jericho. Maybe they are, they are kind of a statutory requirement that is levied against your career or your ministry. And this is to set you back. But it is God who is leading you, who spoke to you about where he is taking you. And now, and how you will get there, the Lord will say to you. That word he says to you gives you the spirit of faith where you draw the strength from and when you draw determination. And so it is that the children of God were heading to the promised land full of milk and honey. And there they got to Jericho. They've heard about them. They said, these sons of Israel, these sons of Jacob, they are very powerful. So they shut the gate. They shut the gate against them. And so, let's read Joshua chapter 6. I want you to read that, please. Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was sadly short because of the sons of Israel. No one went out, no one came in. Verse 2. The Lord said to Joshua, The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. With its king and the valiant warriors, you shall march around the city, all the men of war, circling the city once. You shall do for six days. Verse 4. Also, seven priests shall carry seven trumpets of rams on before the ark. Then the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. That's an instruction. And the priest shall blow the trumpets. Verse 5, it shall be that when they make a long blast with rams on, and when you hear the sound of the trumpets, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people will go up every man straight ahead. Now, when you look at that, that was a word that came to Joshua. That was the instruction that came to Joshua. Every destiny that God has set up as an instruction to get there. Every destiny, every plan of God, every assignment that God has set, he has an instruction to get there. And when you believe that God has given you this to do, you must Ask the Lord. When you come 
against the wall of Jericho, whatever it is, you must pray unto the Lord. The wall of Jericho to some people may be the permit. The wall of Jericho to some people may be, you know, whatever it may be, that may be a wall of Jericho. It may be a requirement you cannot meet up with. But when God is sending you to that destination, that, re that requirement must have to be changed because of you. Praise the name of the Lord. So this wall of Jericho was an hindrance to the destination of the children of God. But God spoke to his servant and he received it as faith. That's the spirit of faith. They had a tenacity. They had a tenacity. So accordingly, Joshua instructed the priest and the people to go forward. He instructed them to go forward and to do as God directed Joshua. They developed tenacity by faith in the direction of of God that they were giving. The men of war encircled the city once and for six days. And then on the seventh day, they marched around the city also seven times. And the priests blasted the, ram, the trumpet of the rams or on. And the people shouted a great shout. And the wall of Jericho collapsed. Look at the process that God gave them. Look at the process. It takes an endurance to go through that process. Sometimes you may be asked to fast, to fast for seven days. For to you, seven days is too much. It might be a process for you to get to a greater height this year. To break barriers. But look at these people here. Six days. They, they encircle the city. On the seventh day, they march around the city. Also seven times. And they'll have to shout. They have to blow the trumpet. It takes an endurance. That's what I'm saying. When you walk by this tenacity, it gives you the endurance. It gives you endurance. I don't know what God is asking you to do. I don't know what process you are going through. You don't need to drop the process because you have to finish the race. You have to finish the race. You have to get to the destination that God is taking you. Don't let your fear cut short where God is taking you. Don't let unbelief cut short where God is taking you. You need the tenacity from the spirit of faith. Hallelujah. Certain breakthroughs requires your input. Certain breakthroughs requires your input. You are praying for breakthrough, breakthrough. It requires your input. It requires your input. And you need this tenacity to make sure that you made, you, 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 you made your effort, you make your input in what God has planned for you. So it requires your input. You need to develop tenacity, the determination by your action, not by sitting down, but by your action. The Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 14, it says, what use is it, my brethren? If someone says, I have faith, but he has no works, he has no action. Can that faith save him? I want to tell you something. Faith cannot make you a millionaire if you don't walk the work of millionaire. Faith cannot give you millions if you don't walk the work of a millionaire. If you don't do the things that the millionaires will do. Those who become millionaires. If you are looking for financial breakthrough and if you don't learn to break, poverty will break you. Unemployment will break you. Your savings will finish. So we're talking about business here, what will take you to that greater heights. You need this tenacity. Faith is not isolated. You can say, I have faith. Your faith is in you. Nobody is arguing with that. But it goes parallel with actions that has to do with what you believe God for. It goes parallel with your investment in where you know that God is calling you to be. I've just mentioned to you that I did a four years course. Did you know how much it cost me? In US dollars? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. It's my action of faith because I believe God is asking me to do it. You can go and Google. You can go and Google if you like because I know Google is open. Roehampton University, London. Go and Google. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You need to have action with your faith. You know, some, some years ago, 
some years ago, about 10 years ago, I, I bought a car. I bought a car. CLS. Some of you know that car. I've had it for 10 years. And a brother went to Google how much I paid for it. I didn't, I mean, I was wondering. He went to Google for what? I worked to get it. With the faith, with the, with the grace of God, I was able to buy it. Why should you go and Google what I bought? Why don't you put action to your own faith to have the same car? Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So don't think you are just driving cars for nothing. Some people go and Google how much you buy it. Those who are jealous of you. Amen. But I want to tell you, when you show action with your faith, God will glorify what you believe in for. I say God will glorify your business. In the name of Jesus. And I pray today you will hear directions. I pray you will hear wisdom and understanding that will give you this spirit of faith to accomplish the thought of God for your life, the thought of God for your career, to step into the place of exploits. In your career and business, it requires tenacity of your faith combined with the action, with your effort, with your investment. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lastly, the spirit of faith which gives you tenacity, gives you focus, gives you focus, gives you focus. Tenacity from the spirit of faith helps you to focus. You have, you have your plan for execution. That informs me that everything we hear and hear from men does not really yield this kind of faith. But I'm talking about the spirit of faith which is imputed by your personal discovery, your encounter with the voice of God, with the direction of God, through the Holy Spirit, the rima of the word of God. And this must give you focus. So that's what it does. It gives you focus. It gives you focus. When God has spoken to you concerning certain things or the vision that he gave to you or the word of God that you discover, you must have focus. And that's what this tenacity does. It gives you focus. It gives you focus. Hallelujah. It gives you focus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter, 9, chapter 11 verse 9. It says, By faith Abraham lived as an alien in the land. In the land of promise. As in a foreign land. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob. Fellow heirs of the same promise for he was looking for the city which has foundation whose architect and builder is God he was looking for it though the word of God has come to him he was dwelling he was dwelling in tent like his, 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 his descendants his fellow heirs of promise he was looking for the city which has foundation he has a focus he has a focus. He can, through focus, your faith can be activated. Therefore, do not give up finding the place of fulfillment. If you have not gotten to that level of fulfillment, you cannot stop looking. You cannot stop finding that place of fulfillment for your life. Praise the name of the Lord. You cannot, you cannot lose focus of where the business, the career, the marriage that God has given to you, you have to be focused. Sometimes we are looking for financial independence, but we are not focused on one business. We want to be jack of all. Some people want to be jack of all trade. Where would you say, this is where my grace belongs? That's another discussion another time. So what I'm saying to you today that Abraham who was called that by faith he was living in tent and with his, with his children and then but the Bible says he was looking for the city which has foundations whose architect and builder is God. Many people they are looking for marriage. I want to tell you you need faith to step into the right marriage. But you must look for the one whose foundation is God. You must look for the one whose foundation is God. Therefore, do not give up 
Do not give up. You must have focus. That's what it gives you. Tenacity gives you focus. Recently, recently, the matriculant had their results. I believe about 67 of them made a good mark. When you look at those matriculant who made it with distinction, they were very ambitious. They were driven with tenacity in the midst of coronavirus pandemic to obtain higher grades for themselves. You can see that. They, they had focus. Some did not have enough pocket money. Some did not have adequate food. Nevertheless, they endured the pandemic and they made good grades. And I'm sure those who made those good grades, those, those good distinctions, they had a picture of their future in focus. They had the picture of their future in focus. And that's why they put a lot of effort to it. They put action behind the faith and they obtained good results. Hallelujah. So what we're saying today, the lack of food is not an hindrance to success. The lack of food for now doesn't stop you from getting to where God will take you. The lack of food. You can tell me about it. I've been unemployed before. Let me even give you another story. I was living on the top of Coniston Court on Abel Road in Hebrew. <laughs> then I, I told you the story before. Then I saw these people dishing out fried rice and macaroni. Very nice one. I was at the top. I was looking at it and I was hungry. But I didn't like the people who were giving it out. I didn't like it. Why? Because they are these religious people. They call them Hare Krishna. And I said, I didn't, these people are not for me. I can't take food from these people. They are additional free food. Amen. That tells you, that's why Jesus said to the Satan, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So, the lack of food does not stop you from getting to where you will get to. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm talking about faith. I'm not talking about myself. I'm sharing testimony with you of the power of faith. Power of faith. The tenacity you draw from faith. That's what I'm talking about. Praise the name of the Lord. There's so much that I can tell you. But I pray that the Holy Spirit, as Jesus said, will disclose to you. Praise the name of the Lord. We encourage you. We tell you how to get, how to get through the hardship of life and the difficulties of life. But through tenacity, you can be, a, you can be the head and not the tail. You can be a lender and not a borrower. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is the work of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you walk in the spirit of faith, listen somebody, if you walk in the spirit of faith, you will walk into your provision. You will walk into your provision. No matter what the, the trials and the, the, the affliction is, but if you are walking by the spirit of faith, you will walk into divine provision. You will walk into favor. You will walk into the midst of people that will accelerate your destiny. In the name of Jesus. May God bless you for receiving the word of today. And I pray that this word will stay with you. And I pray that you will replay this message. There are some things that have been spoken that you may, not, you may not have grasped it. But the Holy Spirit will tune your ear to hear. May God bless you for hearing. Let's give Jesus a clap of freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Our Father, we want to thank you today. We want to thank you for the word that we have received today. We want to thank you, Lord God, for you have imputed your spirit into us. Into someone this morning who is feeling out of space. Who is feeling that there is no future for him or her. Father, I pray, O Lord God, as you gave future to Joseph. Father, I release the picture of the future to someone this morning. In the name of Jesus. I pray, mighty God, O Lord, there are people waiting upon you. They are waiting in faith. They are standing in faith. Lord, as the book of Isaiah 40 said, he said, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect 
who look for, who hope in him will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising towards the sun. He says, they will run. They will not become weary. They will walk. They will not get tired. I pray this morning, Lord God, everyone who is walking in faith, they will not become weary. They will not become tired. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, marvelous Lord. We give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Give Jesus a clap of faith. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed this morning? Hallelujah. I am blessed by this word that I preach. You know, I'm so blessed about it. So giving glory unto God. Hallelujah. Um, today is the last Sunday of the month. Let's give our uh, uh, mission offering. You know, you have not given for a long time this mission because of lockdown. So I want you to give a decent offering this morning to just thank the Lord for the month of February. To thank Him for taking you to the end of this second month. Just use this offering to thank the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's dance and rejoice as we take this offering. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Amen.